So right. we need to move on to our feature tonight. We do. I wanted to talk to you about parody. Parody. Not parody. We're not talking about Weird Al. Oh. We're talking about parity. With a T. How is it? Yeah. How is it? This is a question that was raised to me a couple weeks ago when I was talking about Unraid. You've got an array that, let's say my array right now is 200 gigs. Or, pardon me, 2 terabytes. 2 okay? terabytes. You saw that in Unraid. I've got a 2 terabyte array right now. Hmm. I'm using 1.7 terabytes, but my parity drive is only 750 gigs. Now, I think in terms of mirroring. I think in terms of if I want to have a, a redundant version of my data, I have to have at least that much space hmm. in order to keep it redundantly. So if I have 1.7 terabytes, I need to have 1.7 terabytes in storage space to keep a copy so that if a hard drive crashes, I can restore that hard drive. Hmm. So how is it that parity works when I have 1.7 terabytes of data, but my parity drive is only 750 gigs? How does that make sense? So we're going to check that out right now. Neat. And I uh, hope that you enjoy. Hope you learn lots. And you are going to learn how parity works Good. in only 60 seconds. Wow. Good luck. So you have two 500 gigabyte hard drives in your array, amounting to almost one terabyte of storage space for your data, but only a 500 gigabyte parity drive. But how is that drive, which is half the size of the array, able to make redundant the other two drives? Here's how. Well, we know that our hard drives store data in zeros and ones, and in the case of this example, we're using an even parity drive. So the sum of the data drives, the bits, must equal either zero or two. So in the first column, zero plus one plus one is even, which is a two. And then we're gonna have a zero because that's even, a zero because one plus one plus zero is even, one plus one is even, and so on and so forth. So we're creating even parity in this case. So now, if the second drive in our array were to go kapui, and we lost all the data on that drive, all we would have to do is stick in a new drive there, and the parity drive plus the first drive in the array is gonna be able to recalculate, because it has to be even, the data bits uh, for the second drive. Essentially, that's going to recreate the data on that second hard drive without the expense or overhead of a mirroring type array. Binary solo. So in under 60 seconds, do we get it? I want to see that again. Isn't that exciting? I want to see it again. When I realize how parody works it's mm. like that's really really brilliant really it's paradoxical mm. <laughs> wow you with your big words <laughs> so here's where things go kind of weird this is where things get different now you can see how that works a and with a parody based array such as on raid you can put a whole bunch of hard drives back to back mm -hmm. so if you have six hard drives plus a parody drive so seven hard drives all together you mm -hmm. have enough fault tolerance and again as per that demonstration you can lose one drive and then parity can be rebuilt the drive can be rebuilt from parity so that's pretty cool but what happens is, is if, as you get into larger arrays you can understand that the ratio the chance of losing more than one drive becomes greater so if you have 20 disks as opposed to six disks your chance of losing more than one disk becomes higher so in that case your risk of data loss is higher than with a six disk array. But that said, if you only lose one disk in the array, you're able to rebuild it from parity. And it works just like that. So it's pretty brilliant. But do keep that in mind as you're building your array, how big do you want to go? Because the bigger you get, as far as how many drives, the, uh, the more chance that you have to fail. Uh, if, in a traditional RAID array, you fail two hard drives, then you could potentially lose all the data in the entire array because parity is called uh, striped parity. So the parity information is stored all across all of the drives on the array. So if two drives fails, uh, two drives fail, you're, you're basically risking losing all the data. With Unraid, on the other hand, which we've been looking at over the past few weeks, what happens is because each drive contains its own file system, if one drive fails, you're going to be able to rebuild it from parity, and you've got all your data, and there's nothing lost. If two drives fail, it can't rebuild from parity because it doesn't have the zeros and ones that it needs to figure out whether it's even or odd. In that case, because of the way Unraid works, as opposed to a traditional array, uh, you're actually going to only lose the data from those two drives. 
So in that way, again, Unraid shows itself to be very effective and, and uh, the chance of data loss is much less with Unraid uh, than it could be with, with some other traditional ways of doing things. So definitely cool. And then, of mm -hmm. course, the fact that you can pull a drive out of Unraid, stick it into any other computer. And I should mention that uh, somebody had mentioned that, uh, that we could actually install ReaserFS uh, file system support in our Windows box, which is true. So then you can access that drive from any system directly plugged in. So, yeah. Hope that uh, makes sense for you. <laughs>